make four three ways that's easy make 12 two ways five four and three and then another five four and three let's try something harder make eight seven ways there's quite a lot of ways so how does one compute this number here we're looking at a game that i wrote for my six-year-old son to help him learn addition it's not a particularly difficult game to play and in this case you want to find seven ways to make up eight using these different packets of cherries for example I could choose 4, 3, and then 1. That will be one way to make up 8. Or I could choose 4, 2, and 2. That will make up 8. It's actually not too difficult to do this by brute force. You probably would start with, say, 4, and then see how you can make up the rest. So I have shown you that you can make up the rest with a 3 and a 1, or this 3 and this 1. You can use a 4 and 2 twos, or 4 2 and 2 ones, or 4 2 and 2 ones, and so on. So, this is probably what you would be doing. Now, from the app writing perspective, if I have a much larger collection of these cherries and a much larger goal than 8, presumably there will be many, many ways to make up that goal. And the question is is there a good way to compute the number? So we'll use this as an example and see what we can do. First of all, we can represent these distinct packs of cherries as simply a sequence of integers. So in this case, I'm going to represent them as a sequence 4, 3, 2, 2, 1, and 1. Now, in any configuration that make up 8, either I use this pack of 4 or I don't. So if P denotes the number of solutions in which the first element is used, in this case 4, and Q denotes the number of solutions in which the first element is not used, then the number of solutions that make up the goal 8 is going to be P plus Q. But now, how do we compute P and Q? Well, if you are going to use 4 in your solution, then what you are saying is, I want to make up 4 this is 8 minus 4 because my goal is 8. The rest have to be made up from this subsequence. And we'll call this the tail of the sequence. So, in order to compute P, we're asking how many ways I can make 4 using this list of numbers. So the question now is, I'm given this pair. The goal is make 4 and using these numbers. And as you can see, I can easily compute that. I can use a 3 and a 1, and a 3 and a 1, or 2 and 2, or 2, 2 ones, or this 2 and these 2 ones. Let's see how many I have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There are 5 different ways. And then what about Q? So I'm not using 4. Now my goal is still 8. And the sequence is now this. Well, there aren't many ways to do this. I can use these four numbers, or I can use these three plus this last number, and that's it. There's no other way I can do this. So I have found seven ways to make up eight. So what if I have a much larger problem? What I'm going to do is, I'm going to let p of n comma l be the number of ways to make up n using numbers in the list L. And I'm going to write down the properties that this number has to satisfy under different conditions. So the first condition is if L is empty, so there's no element in L, then this number P n comma L can only be either 0 or 1 is 1 when n is 0 because there's precisely one way to make up 0 from an empty list is to take nothing from the list and otherwise this is going to be 0 
Now, if L is not empty, then P of N comma L is going to be, well, what we need is, if we are going to use the first element from L to make up N, then we better make sure that N is at least the first element of L. So we are going to have two cases. The first is we are using the first element, which we denote by head of L. And the rest of the list will be denoted by tail. And then plus, we need to make up N using only the tail element. And this is when N is at least the head of L. Otherwise, we can ignore the head of L and go on to ask how many ways there are to make up n using the tail element. And so that's it. Suppose I want to find the number of ways to make up 5 using the numbers 5, 4, and 1. Well, what this will say is this will be the same as the number of ways to make up 0 using 4 and 1 plus the number of ways to make up 5 using 4 and 1 and then this p of 0, 4 and 1 well it will fall into the L's here but the goal is less than the head so this is simply the same as p of 0 of 1 and again this is the same as p of 0 of the empty sequence. So this number here is going to be 1. If we look at this second term here, it will be the same as p of 5 minus 4, that's 1. And the tail is just 1. Plus p of 5 and the tail. And you can continue to work out the rest of the details. We will now try to code this up using the language OCaml. OCaml is a very nice language to work with, especially when you're writing recursive functions. So let's get started. Don't worry too much about the syntax, much of it is self-explanatory, and if you want to learn more about it, you can find out more about OCaml. So what we want is we want to write a recursive function. So we'll let rec, and we'll call that function p. And the arguments are n and l, all right? it will match L to a pattern. So it could be empty or it could be non-empty. So empty list is represented by a matching pair of square brackets with nothing inside. And in this case, if N is zero, we'll return one. Otherwise, we'll return zero. And if L is not empty, then it has a head and a tail. If the goal is at least the head, then we can compute this as p of n minus h and t plus p of n and t. Otherwise, we'll just have p of n t, the tail of the list. So that's it. This is an implementation of what we have written on the slide. And let's see how it works. So I'm going to copy this and paste it into OCaml. Let's start OCaml and paste the code in. And let's see what it gives us for the problem that we are trying to solve by hand, where the goal is 5 and the list of numbers is 5, 4, and 1. Now in OCaml, the elements in a list have to be separated by a semicolon. Let's see. So there are two ways. And you can actually see this very clearly. There has to be two ways. Now, what about the problem that we started out with. So this is a problem. Seven ways to make eight with the sequence four three two two one one. So make eight four three two two one one. Okay, let me try that again. Four three two two one one. All right, and indeed there are seven, and we can give it a really big number, say. Uh, say 24 and type all sorts of variables here and let's see what it takes. 12 ways to make 24 using this sequence of numbers 
Now, if you look at this, it's pretty hard to do this by hand and to see to verify if the answer is actually correct. Let's see something that we can get a handle on. Say I want to make five using ten ones. The answer should be ten choose five, right? Because any five numbers from this will make up five. And is this ten choose five? Indeed, it is. So far, this is computing what we expected. And I hope that through this video, you have learned something new. So next time when you see an app that counts, maybe there is math behind it.